understanding the fact that when you see a logarithm, log base b of x, every logarithm has a base. And again, we read this as log base b of x. Again, you started logs last year by understanding that logs and exponential functions are inverses of one another. So when you see log base b of x, Remember, you are solving for the exponent for the base. So you can take every log and you can write it in exponential form. So when you see log base b of x equals y, the base of your logarithm is the same as the base in the exponential function. What it's equal to is the exponent for the base. And then log base b of x, that's what you're solving for in the exponential. Remember. Here is exponential form. Here is log form. So you have to be able to flip-flop between exponential and log form. All right, so that's the first thing you have to be comfortable with. You have to be able to switch back and forth between forms. So let's take a look at example two. Again, write your equation in exponential form. So whatever the base of the logarithm is, that is the base of the exponential. Where is your exponent for the base? That's what it's equal to. So again, I always kind of draw that little, it looks like kind of like a little snail thing. So here's 4. Here's your exponent of 2. So 4 squared is equal to 16. So that's your equivalent exponential expression from this log equation. Remember, logs you are solving for the exponent for the base. So in B, your base is 3. The power is 4. So 3 to the 4th power is equal to 81. So like I said, you have to be able to manipulate, go back and forth between log and exponential forms. So any questions on how I rewrote A and B? You guys go ahead and try C and D for me. Did you come up with 9 to the 1 half um, equal to um, 3? And then 5 to the negative first equal to 1 half. I mean, 1 fifth. What does this 1 half exponent actually mean in radical form? When you have something raised to the 1 half, what does that actually mean? Square root. square root. Remember, so we do know that the square root of 9 is indeed equal to 3. So don't forget, when you see that 1 half power, that's actually um, the square root. So now let's go the other way. Let's write the equation in logarithmic form. So the base of the exponential is 2. So that's going to be the base of the logarithm. So it's log base 2. Remember, what it's equal to is the exponent of the base. So it's equal to 3. And then log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. Remember, the base and the exponent are separated from one another on opposite sides of the log equation. So 10 raised to the negative second is equal to 0 0.01. So log base 10, will we ever write a base 10 subscript? No, it will never be written. Remember, log base 10 is your common logarithm, it's your common base. So it's going to be just be log of 0 0.01 is equal to negative 2. Remember, this is equivalent to log base 10 of 0 0.01 is equal to negative 2. But again, you'll never see that base 10 logarithm written because it is your common logarithm. You guys go ahead and try C and D for me. On changing an exponential into a log. When we get into the next section in 10.4, when we get into solving log and exponential equations, this technique will help us solve some particular equations. So that's why you need to be comfortable changing back and forth between exponential and logs. Any questions on changing from exponential to logs? There are some properties of logarithms that um, you need to remember from last year that you guys went over. Remember, any time you take the log of 1, it's always equal to 0. And example C is a perfect example of that. Because again, any time you take a base and raise it to the 0 power, it's always equal to 1. So when you're asked to take the log of 1, it's always 0. Because any base raised to the 0 power is 1. That includes um, whether it's a natural log, or if it's a log base 10. When you have a log base b of b equal to 1, so the base of the same value is always going to be equal to 1. And that's because b to the first is equal to b to the first.
log base b, now if b has a power, it's just going to be equal to x because b to the x is equal to b to the x. If I change this into exponential form, b to the x is equal to b to the x. Now, this is a very common property. Remember, this goes back to your composition rules of function and inverses. Any time, remember your composition rule of inverses. If you take a function and you do a composition with its inverse, they always cancel each other out to give you x. It doesn't matter the order of this composition when you are doing composition of function and its inverses. So this last property is coming from composition of a function and its inverse. When you have an exponential function and you have a log with the same base as the exponent, these are inverses of one another. Remember, log base b is the inverse of this base b. So the b and the log base b are going to cancel each other out, and you're just going to be left with them because of this composition property. On your calculator, you do have two keys for two, two logarithms. The key right next to 7 is your log base 10 key. You've got another key right under it, under it, right next to 4, which is the ln. And remember, that's base e. As long as you have an 84 calculator with the updated operating system, which last year your Algebra 2 teachers probably made sure you had the updated operating system, if you need to evaluate a logarithm with any other base, if you go under alpha, window. This is how you know you have the updated operating system. If you hit alpha window, you should get this menu to appear. If you, do, if you have an 84 and you hit alpha window and this screen doesn't appear, you do not have the latest operating system. You can see me. I can download it for you or you can download it from a friend. Um, and if you choose option number five, That's how you can type in another base other than base 10 or little e. So if you wanted to evaluate a log base 6, like I said, you go under alpha window number 5, and then you're allowed to type in. If you have an 83, you cannot update the operating systems on 83s, and the TI-83s do not have this capability. You'll have to use change of base, which we'll be talking about next class. You'll have to do a change of base formula. Only the 84s, you can get this update operating system. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples here. So this is practice using our properties. So log base 2 of 2 to the x. This base of the log is the same as that exponential. So they're going to cancel each other out. All you're left is of that exponent of x. So if it's not a property, you're either going to be using properties that we just talked about or change the exponential form. So when you're asked to evaluate a logarithm, look at the properties we just talked about or change it into exponential form. So let's take a look at b. What is the base of this logarithm? 10. So this question is asking you to solve for the exponent for 10. So 10 to some power is equal to 100. That's what log of 100 is asking you to do. So 10 to what power is equal to 100? What would the exponent be? 2. Log base 3 of 9 to the x. Again, these aren't going to cancel each other out right away because they're not the same. This base of the logarithm is not the same as the base of 9. So change it into exponential form. 3 to some power is equal to 9 to the x. Now the issue is, in order to um, figure out what this is going to be, you need to make sure your bases are the same. Is there a way to rewrite 9 into a base of 3? Well, what's 3 times 3? Three? 9. What's another way to write 3 times 3? Three? 3 squared. So I can write this as 3 to some power is equal to 3 squared raised to the x power. Now, what's your property when you have a power to a power? You're going to do what? Power to a power, what do you do with the 2 and the x? You're going to do what? Multiply them. So then the answer is just going to be 2x. Look at D. 
you have 5 raised to the log base 5 of 1. Again, the base of the exponential is the same as the base of the logarithm and the exponent. This goes back to your inverse property. What happens with this 5 and log base 5? They're going to do what? Cancel. So you're just left with a 1. What's the base of the logarithm in E? The base is a what? 10. So I could write this as log base 10. What's another way to, way to write 100 with a base of 10? I can rewrite 100 as what? 10 to the 10 squared raised to the x power. So then again, I can change this 10 to some power is equal to 10 to the 2x. So what's the answer going to be here? This exponent will be what? 2x. You guys go ahead and do the next uh, next uh, next three for me. All right. Um, so again, what's the base of this logarithm in i? This base is what? 10. So 10 to what power is equal to 1,000? So it's just simply going to be a what? 3. Let's take a look at J. 3 to what power is equal to 27? 3. So now let's take a look at K. Log base 2 of 0.5. So 2 raised to some power is equal to. Because of your properties of negative exponents, it's easier to look at this in fraction form. What is another way to write 0.5 as a fraction? <coughs> 1 half. So notice the relationship between 2 and 1 half. They are reciprocals of one another. So what would I have to take 2 and raise it to to reciprocate this? I'll have to raise it to the power of what? Negative 1. So x equals negative 1. So if you see a reciprocal, don't forget you need to take the negative exponent. So now let's look at L. Notice you have the 5. You have the log base 5. So we know that they're going to cancel out. So what are we going to be left with? We're going to be left with a 2 times x plus 2. You guys go ahead and try the next row. Next row, M, N, N, O, P. So like I said, guys, if you don't remember the properties, so if it doesn't fall into one of the properties, then switch it into exponential form. So for example, in N, Log base 3 of 1. Anytime you're taking the log of 1, it doesn't matter the base, it's always going to be 0. But you can always change it to exponential form. Um, any questions on M, N, O, and P? Yes, George. So for P, why does the 2x plus 1 like come down? Why isn't it like 5 to the 2x? So we know 5 is going to be multiplied by whatever this natural log of e to the 2x plus 1 is. So 5 is just being multiplied. So think about what natural log of e to the 2x plus 1 is. e is the base of this logarithm, correct? So e raised to some power is equal to e to the 2x plus 1. So we know that this natural log of e to the 2x plus 1 is just going to be 2x plus 1. But if you remember, what happens with one of your properties is the base of the logarithm is the same as the base right here. They're going to cancel each other out and you're just going to be left with this exponent. All right, let's take a look at Q. So 3 to what power is equal to 9? 2. Log base 5 of 5 to the 2 thirds. What's this going to cancel? The log base 5 and 5 are going to cancel, so what are we going to be left with? 2 thirds. Take a look at S. Log base 25 of 5. So 25 raised to some power is equal to 5. Well, what's the relationship between 25 and 5? I know that 5 is the square root of what? 25, correct? So I know the square root of 25 is equal to 5. So as a fractional exponent, what's another way to write square root of 25? 1 half. Now what about t? 5 to some power is equal to negative 25. Is it ever possible to take 5 raise it to an exponent and have that output become negative. No, because even if I plug in negative values for x, all that's going to do is take the reciprocal of the denominator. So this is not possible. This is undefined. 
And this is why when we were graphing logs and we talked about domains a little bit in the last unit when we were doing um, our limits, this is why I said you always have to take the log. You take whatever's inside the log. That's always got to be greater than zero. It's always got to be greater than zero. All right, so any questions on that? So hopefully this is coming back a little bit from last year. You guys go ahead and do example five for me. Go ahead and practice those on your own. Like I said, guys, when you do not have a calculator, which you do have to be able to do these without a calculator, if you do not recognize the properties, change it into exponential form. So if you do not know what the properties are, change it into exponential form and solve for that exponent that way. Remember, like I mentioned, any time, doesn't matter what the base is, any time you're asked to take a log of 1, it's always equal to 0. Because any base raised to the 0 power is always equal to 1. Any questions on, and remember, natural log of E is always equal to 1. Because remember, what's the base of the natural log? The base of the natural log is E. E to some power is equal to E. Remember, this exponent is a 1, is equal to 1. E to the X is equal to E to the 1. That exponent has to be a 1. So any questions on evaluating logs? You also last year talked about properties. You did some properties. You have three properties you have to remember of logs. You have a product, quotient, and power property. Do you remember how you can expand out if you're taking the log of a product? Remember, if you're taking the log of a product, so you have an n times n inside the log, you can break up this log into an addition. So you can take log base b of m plus log base b of n. You can expand out the expression through addition. You also have a quotient property. If you're taking the log of a fraction, the log of a quotient, you can split it up through subtraction. So log base b of m minus log base b of n. Just a warning. There is no addition and subtraction property of logs. In other words, if you're taking the log of an addition inside, it is not equal to log of a plus log of b. You are stuck. If there is addition inside the log, you cannot split it up. Remember, log base, again, it doesn't matter the base. It does not split up into log base um, A plus log base B. That's multiplication. It follows the same rules as exponents. Remember what happens when you multiply like bases? You add exponents. It follows the same rules. Same thing with the quotient property. You have a quotient property of exponents. When you divide, you subtract the exponents. All right? Just like if you have subtraction on the inside, it is not equal to log of A minus log of B. There is no addition and subtraction signs. You are stuck if you've got addition or subtraction inside the log. This property comes in the most handy when we are solving equations. When you're taking the log of something raised to a power, remember you can take this power and move it as the coefficient of the log. n times log base b of m. Just like power to a power, you end up multiplying. So even if it's a natural log, same properties apply whether it's a log or a natural log. So this will become n times the natural log of m. We use these properties to help us solve equation, log equations when we get to it in the next section. So now, I'm just going to get some practice using these properties. Log of 4x divided by y. So you have a quotient. So how can we split up a quotient through what? Subtraction. So I can rewrite this as log of 4x minus log of y. Remember, it's not log of 4x minus y. You're splitting it up into two separate logarithms. Is there another property we can use? What operation is happening between the 4 and the x? Multiplication. So now how can you split up multiplication? We can split that up through what? Addition. If you want, 
you can put parentheses around the log of 4 plus log of x to show that that was in the numerator. You don't have to in this case because addition is a fraction. You would just work it left to right. Um, but let's take a look at b. The parentheses will become significant in b. First of all, I'm taking the log of a quotient. So how can I split this up? I can split this up through what? Subtraction. So log base 7 of y minus log base 7 of 3x squared. Yes. Yep. So now how can you split up 3x squared? What's happening between the 3 and the x squared? We're doing what? Multiplying. So I can split that up through what? Addition. Now this is where you want to make sure you keep parentheses around what's in the denominator because it's going to be following the subtraction sign. So I can write this as log base 7 of y minus the quantity log base 7 of 3 plus log base 7 of x squared. Do you see another property you can use? What can we do with this exponent for x? What can we do with it? We can use your power property. So what can I do with this exponent for 2? I can move it to the what? I can move it where? To the front. So I have log base 7 of y minus the quantity log base 7 of 3 plus 2 log base 7 of x. Without those parentheses, your answers would be incorrect. If you, you could distribute the subtraction sign and have the minus in front of that 2 log base 7 of x. If it follows the subtraction sign, it's in the denominator of the fraction. All right, otherwise, you can just leave the parentheses around it. So any questions on A and B? You guys go ahead and try C and D for me. Hopefully you guys got this far. Now, the thing I'm going to caution you about, when you are expanding and or condensing, you want to make sure, if you can, simplify your answers. Take a look at this log base 8 of 64. Can you simplify log base 8 of 64? What does this mean? What does this logarithm mean if I was to evaluate this? This means 8 to what power is equal to 64? Can I take 8 and raise it to a power and have it be equal to 64? So what does this simplify down to? This is going to just become what? 2. So you do need to write this as 2 plus 2 log base 8 of 6. Once you split it up, if you can, you want to make sure, think about your logs and what it means if you have a constant there. Take a look at D. Hopefully you got it this far. Log base 3 of 9 plus 5 log base 3 of X. Take a look at this log base 3 of 9. Can you simplify log base 3 of 9? 3 to what power is equal to 9? What is that going to simplify to? That will simplify to what? 2. So it's just going to be 2 plus 5 log base 3 of X. You've got to make sure, if you can, evaluate those logarithms. Can you put your phone away? Thank you. Phones are becoming an evil, evil, my evil nemesis right now. I can see it when you're hiding them behind your bags and everything on your desk. Yes, Tegan. Um, why is C log base 8 of 6? Why is this log base 8 of 9? Wait a minute. Log base 8 of right here? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. I wrote a 6 instead of an X. It should be an X. Thank you. It should be an X. Thank you. So you can also use your properties to condense. How do you condense logarithms? We can bring them together through what? When I see subtractions, now I'm going to smush them all together. I call this smushing. How can I bring this together as a single logarithm? When I see subtraction, I can bring it together through what operation? Division. So log base 4 of 32 divided by 2. And what is 32 divided by 2? 16. So log base 4 of 16. Can you simplify log base 4 of 16? Yes, because 4 to what power is equal to 16? 2. Now, when you are smushing and condensing and you see a coefficient in front of the log, 
you always want to use that power property first. So I want to move that 6 and the 5 first before I do something with the addition. So I have log base 2 of x to the 6 plus log base 2 of y to the 5th. When you are smushing and condensing, you always want to make sure that you move those powers first. Now, how can I bring them together through addition? I can do what? Multiplication. So I have log base 2 of x to the 6th, y to the 5th. How am I going to bring C together? What operation? There's no powers to move. There's no coefficients in front of the natural log. When it's addition, I can bring this together through what operation? Multiplication. So I have the natural log of 5x times 3x. Make sure you multiply if you can inside the parentheses. So I have the natural log of what? 5 times 3 is 15x squared. You guys go ahead and try D for me. Again, move those powers first. from. And what does log base 4 of 4 equal? Going back to the log properties, log base 4 of 4 is equal to what? 1. All right, so your final answer for D should be 1. All right, so any questions on that? Again, like I said, when you are condensing, always move those powers first. All right. Remember, just like order of operations, guys, addition and subtraction are equal operations. So if you have an expression that's all addition and subtraction, you just start condensing left to right. So again, the first thing you want to do is if you see a number in front of the log, move it back to the exponent. So I need to move this as the natural log of 2 to the third minus natural log of 3x plus natural log of x plus 1 to the second minus natural log of x minus 1. First step is always move those powers first. So move those powers back into position first. So let's take a look at the first, ex the first two. How can I condense when I see a subtraction sign? I'm going to condense this through what? Division. So I know this is going to be the natural log. Again, I know 2 to the third is 8 over 3x. So now I need to, again, condense that to plus natural log of x plus 1 squared. So how do I condense addition? I condense that through multiplication. So remember, this is just a fraction over 1. So x plus 1 squared is going to be in the numerator. If it follows a plus sign, it's in the numerator. If it follows a subtraction sign, it would go down to the denominator because you're dividing by the reciprocal. So now again, minus natural log of x minus 1. That means I'm dividing by x minus 1. Now what happens, though, remember when you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. That's why x minus 1 ends up in the denominator. Just remember, if it follows a subtraction sign, it goes in the denominator. If it's following addition sign, it goes in the numerator. All right, because you're just multiplying straight across. So any questions on how I got that for part B? E? You guys go ahead and try uh, F for me. So hopefully you guys came up with something that looks like this. Again, we know that 5 squared is 25 when I move that 2 back. Again, this 3x to the third power, don't forget, you have to cube not only the 3, but the x to make sure you have 3x in parentheses. Again, this is following the subtraction sign. x minus 2 squared has to be on the bottom. This is following the subtraction sign. x plus 2 has to be on the bottom. This x also has to be on the bottom because it's following the subtraction sign. Yes? Why does it say 27x to the because what happened was when I got it down to this point, you see where I got the 27x to the third? And I multiplied by the x. If I just left it as 3x in parentheses cubed, and I also have the x on the end, would that be acceptable or is that? It's just not simplified all the way. Any other questions on that? <coughs>
Any other questions on your expanding or condensing? Okay. Um, so I want to show you, I know it's a movie, a movie time, um, a quick clip because uh, a lot of people always ask, when the heck am I?